everybody and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Noob 2 Expert tutorial with uh, Scott and me. How are you doing Scott? Excellent, excellent. Good. So last time you fought a war against Poland I was watching. Or it no, might have no, no, no. been the no, other no, way around. That, yeah. that was that was all you. That, that was, was all me. You. Oh, all that the glory, all, all the you. all the fold, all the things. Gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> so, the outcome of that war, well, we've already uh, put in the front line against Russia, just to build up some planning bonus there, we might revise that later. But the outcome of this is 137 army experience, and we're going to do something with that now, finally, that we have some. But first, let's have a look at logistics. We're short on infantry equipment, 55 days to catch up, that's not too bad. Support equipment, 175 days, that is bad. And light tanks, almost 700 days. That is really bad. Can't do that. So we need to need to make sure that these are up to speed. We probably need more infantry equipment because we're going to lose a crap ton once we go to war. Um, support and light tank, not so much. But we do need to increase output here. So let's see what we can do. We gain some more factories. Not that many. Infantry equipment is running on full speed with 15 factories, that's good. Support equipment the same. We actually might rescale that or downscale that a little bit once we've caught up. Artillery production has started, that is good. You know what, let's make sure that we produce the tanks faster. So what I've done here is basically I've removed all the grey factories, all of these. So we just have the green ones that are actually assigned. And then I've taken away one green line here, and they trickle it down here where they have been pre-assigned. If I do this again, they will trickle it down here. If I remove them down here, they will go back up. So that's one way you can make sure that you produce exactly what you want. And actually, I want this this way around. The tanks get priority over the artillery. Let's do it this way. All right, that looks good. We don't really need more of the motorized though. That's probably fine. Once we get more factories, we will be alerted up here if we have some free ones, so that should be fine. I will put in another line of uh, these, of infantry equipment, but at the bottom, so they will be the last ones to receive factories. Yeah, because we will need it eventually. Modify government, what can we do? Well, we're getting short on manpower. 780,000 is not really that much if you go to big wars. So we can change our conscription laws from limited to 0.5%. We could go to disarmed nation which is 1%, then we would be out of manpower completely. Uh, volunteer 1.5% is still less than 25 so we need to go up. Extensive conscription is the next one, 5%. We do suffer a training time penalty, but I don't really care that much about it. We can always just force deploy them and train them afterwards. So we're going to do that right now, and we're up to 2.4 million. That's good. We also go for Angelos. We want to have Austria. They never said no. They won't do it today. Uh, once we're done with that, we might go demand Sudetenland once we have enough troops. And then we should get uh, this area, which also has some nice factories. We'll see. Just That just increases our factory output because we have more factories. And that's cheaper to do because it's 70 days for all of those factories than just you know producing random factories all over all right what else can we do chat is going completely nuts <laughs> that's, that's okay yeah that's yeah. okay just you know knock yourselves out it's fine it's a beautiful thing uh, it's all going great so we are producing infantry equipment support equipment light tanks artillery it's all good what are we short on the most all of it. Okay, let's modify our templates here. Infantry division, let's go in. We are at combat with 18. We want to have more than just 18. And we want them to be fairly strong because we're going against the Soviet Union. They need to be able to pack a punch. Soft attack is not that great currently. 69. I guess we have to talk about this a little. How do you actually look at your uh, templates? Scott, if you want to follow, if you just go in Recruit and Deploy and you know click on Edit on one of your divisions there. So you have the division designer open. Okay. Wow, that is a thing. It is a thing. It is a thing. So I'm looking at my infantry here. I have nine battalions of infantry people making up this infantry division currently. And on the right hand side you have all these stats. Base stats, combat stats and equipment costs, right? Yes. Good. So let's have a look at the base stats. 
Infantry is slow. Infantry has a base speed or max speed of 4 kph, kilometers per hour. So those in forests or mountains are even slower. And even on, on planes, they are not that fast. Light tanks can go 12. If you mix up light tanks with infantry, well, the infantry is the weakest link, so they will only go 4. So you don't really want to do that. If you want more speed, you need horses or motorized or mechanized or tanks. That's one of the things that's really important. Then HP. Strength represents how much damage this unit can suffer before it is destroyed. HP is important, obviously, because if you get to zero HP, that unit is gone. All the training they, you put in there, all the time you spend on, on getting them up to speed, all the equipment you put in there, all gone. So you don't really want that. Organization is one of the main stats. Organization indicates combat readiness and how organized a unit is. That doesn't really tell you much. Let's put it this way. If you fall below 5 organization, this unit will not move. It can't. If it gets caught with that little organization, it will immediately withdraw into adjacent territory. It does that like 2 or 3 times and it gets overrun. So if you fight with, let's say, 20 organization against an enemy with 100 organization, there is pretty much no way you will push that enemy out of the way. Because you will have to break off your attack running low on organization while the enemy is just still sitting there waiting for you. Um, recovery rate is basically how quickly you regain your organization. So the higher that is, the better. Uh, the, the more of a stand you can put in. And then you have all the others. Reconnaissance, suppressions, we, we don't really need those right now, so we're not going to really talk about them. Supply use is important. The more supply you use, the more um, supply that area needs to support. We had to talk about supply and supply regions and putting up infrastructure and all of that. Uh, if you have a an, an, uh, division that has, let's say, 0.1 supply and you have another division that has 0.5 supply, well, if your army consists of those with 0.5 supply, you need five times as much supply coming in as for those with 0.1. But then again, those divisions might usually be bigger, have the heavier uh, stuff, so they will usually fight better. So that's one thing just to have a look at. Reliability, you only need that for tanks. Uh, trickle back basically tells you... Um, yeah, it says right there, the proportion of losses in combat that can be saved and returned to the manpower pool. So whenever you get attacked and you lose people, it's more likely they get injured and heal up over time. And you can retrain them. You can you can put them out again. Uh, rather than just have them dying right there on the battlefield. So that is something. Uh, experience loss. How much experience is lost in a division when they take casualties and have to replace them? Whenever you put in fresh manpower into divisions that have some experience... Let's have a look here. Uh, our guys are mostly regulars. Some of them are trained. And we should have some in here that are still green. Yeah. This yellow bar that indicates how close they are to the next experience level, that will drop significantly. If you lose 50% of your people, you drop down a level easily. So that's one of the things to keep in mind. Right, then combat stats. So this is where it really counts. Soft attack, hard attack. These are the main stats. Soft attack determines how good you are against human beings. Hard attack is how good you are against tanks, motorized, mechanized. So a high hard attack will make it able or will, will enable you to push against tanks. A high soft attack will enable you to push against infantry. Uh, that is in combination with defense and breakthrough. Let's skip air attack here for a second. Defense is when you get attacked. Breakthrough is when you are attacking, basically. So the higher your breakthrough, the more likely it is you will just shove enemy units out of the way and break through. You know, Blitzkrieg. And defense, the higher that is, the harder it is for the enemy to push you out of the way. So that you want to have up as high as possible. Armor is important, obviously, when you have tanks in there, when you have mechanized, when you have motorized, you do get an armor value. Um, if your armor is higher than the enemy's piercing, it means they cannot penetrate your armor and they will immediately suffer a huge combat penalty. So if you have one heavy tank just sitting there, a relatively small division, and they are attacking with like 20 infantry divisions, it might just be that they can't push you out of the way because they can't pierce you. Um, initiative, the higher the initiative, the quicker it can reinforce into a battle. Um, well, basically how this works, you have seen that already, when combat is going on, 
and you click on this this little bubble that tells you a combat is going on, you have uh, two columns, one on the left side, which is you, and one on the right side, which is the enemy, and at the bottom you have reinforcements or reserves. So when you get late to a combat, there is, every night, at, you know, 2400, there is a chance of X percent that you will join the battle the next morning, so as soon as the day rolls over. That chance increases every day until you actually just join. Um, the higher the initiative, the more that increases per day, and the higher your initial stat is, so the faster you will basically join the battle. That's quite nice. Entrenchment. Yeah, the ability to make proper defensive entrenchments before hostile attack. So you will dig in. You will dig your foxhole and you will sit there and you will endure more uh, of an attack. It gives you a defense uh, bonus. And then we come to combat with, and here's where it gets interesting. We've talked about combat with a little bit. So whenever you attack one province to another, you have a combat width of 80. Every adjacent province on your side that is attacking into the enemy province will give you another 40. So you can see that the, the baseline here is 40, right? 40 times 2 is 80. And every 40 attached to that is all base is 40. So you do want to have a combat width that scales up to 40. So currently this one here is 18, which is crap. If it, were, if it was 20, that would be f perfect, right? I can have two divisions fighting on a 40 combat with terrain. Right? Sounds yeah. good? <laughs> Following yeah. me? Alright, yeah. so you basically want to have a division that is a uh, division size that is 8, 10, 20, or 40. Make sense? Mine's 12. Yeah, that's crap. So you either take one out, because one infantry is two, or you put four in, then you're up to 20. But that's what you need the experience for, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to have a quick look what I'm going to put in here. Uh, 200 artillery, I can't really put artillery in here. And the infantry is meant, in my case, is meant to just hold the line, and, and whenever the tanks advance... They will just fit in afterwards, so they will get Engineer Company to have Defensive Bonus and Movement Bonus. They will get what else? Recon? Mm, yeah, well, it gives them some Movement Bonus, so it might be nice. But for that... Ooh, don't close that. For that, I do need Support Equipment, which I'm really, really short on, so I can't really do that. Support Artillery? That needs Artillery, which I don't have, so I can't do that either. Maintenance Company? I don't have tanks in there, so no. It doesn't really make sense to use those. And Support Anti-Air? I'm not producing that, so it doesn't make sense to have those. Alright, so no support equipment here. I will just increase you with one more infantry up to a 20 combat width. That increases my weight, it increases my supply use. My soft attack goes up, my hard attack goes up a little bit, defense goes up by quite a lot, 10%. Uh, breakthrough goes up by 10%, HP goes up by 10%, I need more manpower, I need more infantry equipment. So the last column here is on the right hand side, the equipment cost. Manpower, training time, infantry equipment, support equipment, whatever your company consists of, you can see it here. So you know in advance, I have 100,000 manpower, this needs 10,000 manpower, I can train 10 divisions and then I'm out of manpower. That's how you would look at this. Uh, below those stat columns, there is a little tank and an infantry helmet. You can see that? If you still had it open. <laughs> yeah, I got it open. All right. Oh, yes, the tank and the infantry. Yep. And the helmet, right. And there's a bar yep. in between. Yep. Uh, for my infantry division, that bar is currently to the very right, to the helmet. That's your hardness. And when you hover over the helmet or the tank, it tells you what it actually is. Hardness 0%, soft attack taken 100%, hard attack taken uh, 0%. So, hardness presents how much of your division is made up of armored or at least protected vehicles. When attacked, a division adds together all soft attacks and hard attacks. A division with high hardness will suffer fewer soft attacks and more hard attacks and vice versa. So if this division gets attacked by tanks, the tanks don't... Well, they do more hard attack than they do soft attack. Which is relatively good for the infantry. You know, tanks versus tanks and infantry versus infantry. But then again, tanks have the breakthrough and all of that as well. So usually tanks versus infantry is just steamrolling. But it's good to know here, because if you get this to mostly hard attack, if you have a tank division with mechanized infantry, which also count as protected vehicles, so more towards hardness, you won't really suffer that much soft attack. And if the enemy comes with a lot of artillery pieces 
which increase their soft attack considerably, they won't do as much damage to you, because you are a harder target. You actually need tanks and anti-tank guns to go against you, which is quite nice. Uh, I'm not going to go nukes right now, thank you. <laughs> Jeez, that chat. Going completely crazy. Well, and they below you well. <laughs> yeah, they, they do, it seems. All right, below that you have the adjusters. If you hover over those, there's a forest, and then you have a boot, a sword, and a shield. So there's a movement penalty or bonus, there's an attack penalty or bonus, and there's a defense penalty or bonus. Depending on what you have in here. So for example, I have the engineer company attached, which gives me a river movement plus 25% and defense plus 25%. There is river, and there's my plus 25%. And below that, the most important thing really for anybody who plays this strategically, first of all, it tells you uh, in, in icons what resources you need. So for me, it's steel and aluminium and the estimated production cost. So this here is 500 to 600 production cost. This is cheap. If we have a look at a division of tanks with a 20 combat width, we would talk, well, for light tanks, we would talk about like 2,500. And if you go super heavy tanks, you can have it up to four, uh, 45,000. So you can deploy a lot of infantry units before you can actually deploy a super heavy tank unit. That's one thing to keep in mind here. Alright, I think we're done with this one. For now, the only thing left is, well, the left part, basically. You have the lovely little helmet. If you click on that, you can select a different icon. Well, I'm fine with the helmet. Then you have the name of the division. This is infantry division. I just leave it as it is. You could override it if you want to. And then you have your uh, priority icons. So you can set it to reserves, to default, or to elite. Reserves just means they get the new equipment last, and all the reinforcements last, and elite, they get it first. So I will set my tank in a second to get all the reinforcement first, because they will do most of the fighting, and these guys, I just leave them on default. Now, it cost me five points, um, five army experience to edit this. I will do that. I still have 132 left. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Now tanks. This is a bollocks template. I hate it already. So first of all, let's bring this in line a bit lit. A bit lit? Yeah, a bit lit. A little bit. So I added two tanks, I removed two tanks. Doesn't cost me anything, it just beautifies the layout here a little bit. What could we add here? Maintenance company is definitely a thing. I already have recon, I already have engineers. That's probably quite good to have. I don't really need the engineers, but I do like... They mostly just give you defense and entrenchment, but they also do give you the attack and defense bonus and the movement bonus. And I, yeah, it's, um, we keep that. Okay, so we had a combat width of 12. Let's add some motorized to that. 16, 18. Can't do anything in this line because that's already an armored line, so we're gonna go over here and add some more. So that considerably increased our HP our organization, which is really good to have. Suppression, we don't need. Felicity, a baker just subbed. Thank you very much for the sub. Hop in the chat and talk to the guys. They're going crazy. <laughs> uh, reliability increases good for the tanks. Breakthrough goes up a little bit. Defense goes up by 50%. Awesome. Yeah, I want that. Um, we just increased all the manpower and training time and all of that as well, obviously. And it costs a lot of points, but we're going to do it. As you can see, this now costs 3,000 production. But since we already have them in the field, they just need to reinforce, which is not too bad. All right, that looks good. Let's go back to the cavalry here. They don't do that much. Comet width of 8. You don't really need support artillery. Remove that. Um, the extra movement. Do we get? Yeah, you do get movement bonus for everything. I leave that in there. And I will put in way more horses over here. Put that up to 20 combat width. These are just here for the speed. I have a 6.4 kph speed. And we'll be able... Oh, all the attack penalties. We'll be able to just break through um, weak lines and just capture territory relatively quickly compared to the rest of the infantry. Which means enemy infantry won't be able to catch you that easily. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay, let's keep that. And we've pretty much spent all our experience. What else can we do with army experience, you ask? I hear you. 
Okay, let's remove some of these lines. Since we don't really have the equipment to support all those lines. Ten divisions of this, three of that, that looks good. Yeah, we're short on infantry equipment by 23,000 guns. It's only 160 days. That's before the USSR is done with their stuff, right? 140 days. Ooh, cutting it close. Getting some more factories soon, which means I need to move you to the top because I need these guns quicker than I need anything else. Uh, no, not you, not you, not you. You need to be up here. And then you. Yeah, something like that. Alright, this will obviously now uh, reduce our strength everywhere. Because we've just doubled up on the amount of uh, people we have in these units. And that will, yeah, it removed our veterancy bonus as well. That's just what happens when you do this. You have to live with that. And we will lose a lot of manpower in, in the next few seconds here. So, what can we do with army experience other than what we've done? You can build variants of tanks, of ships, and of fighters. Well, obviously ships and fighters use air and navy experience rather than army experience. So we're currently producing the light tank too. And next episode I'm going to show you how we could modify that to make it even better than it currently is. Because we will be getting attacked with some light tanks by the Soviets and they will have medium tanks fairly soon. And we don't. Which is bad. Not before 1939. Well, if we were to go for treaty with the USSR, uh, there you go. Reduce ahead of time penalty by 100% or give a 50% research bonus if not ahead of time for the Panzer III, which would be our medium. So we could do that. But that opens up a whole new can of worms, which I'm going to talk about next time, once we talk about tanks. How you doing down there? Still alive? Uh, yeah, we're still alive. Mm-hmm. And we're in February 37. We are actually in 37. Look at that. <laughs> so, for those in the stream, don't go anywhere. We'll continue straight away. And for those watching the video, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to justify a subscriber goal. Blitz creak the like button. Follow me on Twitter if you want to catch the next live stream. I'm Scriptar. He is Scott. And you are dismissed. Bye-bye.